On today's video, update 33 is here. It's time to go over the patch notes. We have a new event, Osiris Invitational. This is the name of the update. We also have Family Day coming up, a new holiday slash seasonal event for Rise of Kingdoms, optimizations to Soroli Crisis, brand new bosses, changes to Lost Kingdom, and optimizations to the game. One of the changes being, finally, the tier one exploit on passes is being fixed as well. Let's talk about all that and more in this video. Sit back, drop a like on the video. Hey there YouTube, welcome back to Gecko Gaming. Today we have update 33 patch notes. More often than not, they also release a Facebook post, but apparently that's come out now tomorrow. And I didn't really feel like waiting an extra day, making you wait an extra day for the post. If you prefer me to do it with the screenshots on Facebook and all that, and you're okay with waiting a day, leave me a comment down below. But more often than not, the early bird seems to get the warm in here. So let's go over this. So update 33's name is Osiris Invitational. Osiris Invitational is almost here, Osiris League is almost over and the top alliances have been ranked in both realms of Horus and the realm of Anubis. You may be wondering which of these are two realms is the strongest one. There is an Osiris Invitational coming up, blah, 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 blah. The top four alliances for each realm at the end of Osiris League will be invited to Osiris Invitational. To offer fair competition, all participating governors will use the same set of commanders, troops, individual, and alliance technology. And... There's going to be exclusive practice matches to provide participating alliances some help to familiarize themselves with the new competition format. Holy smokes. We knew that the top four alliances would go to Osiris Invitational. This was announced in the beginning of Osiris League. And as a matter of fact, my alliance, JWM, with our second team, JWM2, where I play, are going to Osiris Invitational. Two of our teams are going to Osiris Invitational. And on this channel right here, we're gonna cover everything you need to know about this event ahead of time. I'll show you the practice matches. I'll show you how the, uh, the system works, show you all the commanders and all the goodies. I love this. One of the things that I've always asked myself is, but the guys in Realm of Anubis have a few commanders missing. What are they gonna do? Maybe they have less troops for some reason, although a big part of these guys migrated out of the first realm to the second realm, but whatever. This is crazy. To be fair to all competitors, everybody's going to be using the same stuff. So this is all about strategy, teamwork, and gameplay, and ability to play Ark of Osiris rather than having the deep pockets worth of commanders. It's going to change a lot of stuff. For JWM2, for example, we're lacking a lot of commanders, which now we will have an availability for. Oh, this is going to be a good one. And for those of you who don't know which teams are going to make it out there to Osiris Invitational, we can show that to you right here. If we go really quickly into the schedule in the realm of Horus, we have JWM and OV, as well as HKL and JWM2, where I play. And in the realm of Anubis, we have NCB and FN with NBA and 411K. So it's gonna be those four against those four. And as I mentioned, we're gonna cover everything you need to know about this event. So when you make it there in the future, you'll know how it looks like and what it's all about. Let's go back into the patch notes because there's a lot more to cover. A new event is coming up in the game, Family Day. This is going to open about two weeks, gradually to all kingdoms about two weeks after the update. Update being on the 27th, so that is next week. This time next week, well, in the morning, better said. Family Day is all about an exciting holiday event, just like the previous ones we've seen, except that this one is a uh, alliance-based one. Family Week, seven days of quests, great rewards, five days every day, new sets of quests. You get those multipliers, you get your rewards out of that. ROK Family Portrait is the name of the event that is uh, the, it's like the 25 individual levels, except that because this is alliance based, there's going to be, I believe, only 15 levels and all the alliance can contribute to it. This means that it's an event where the rewards come in a different format. We have plenty of videos on the channel, including that one carded up on the top right from that type of event, but we will cover this event extensively once it comes out. So you know exactly what to do. This is not one of those where you need to gather all the time to get to level 25 though. 
Fireside story, collect timber while sprucing up your ROK portrait. That's the things that you donate essentially. Race against time is back. Who can kill the most barbarians within a limited time period? Show your strength. We've covered this event in the past as well. Glad to see it back. It's a fun event. You got nine minutes, as many marches as you can. Go out there, destroy barbarians. The quicker, the better. Spoiler alert, the best thing to do, grab a mate. Both of you do it together. 10 marches going against barbarians. They go out like that. Protect the supplies, deliver supplies safely to the village. Protect the property up for your citizens. So this is kind of like Silk Road, I guess. I guess they scrapped Silk Road altogether and kind of brought it into this type of game mode where it's a an event within a seasonal event. I like it, it's okay. Silk Road was a little weird. I prefer to see Sir Rolly Crisis more and Ian Bollard more and less of that event because it was a little bit more weird. Uh, it's a little tough to do too more tough to actually register damage especially because in jwm they just destroy them real quick and it wasn't fun but hey now we'll see it at least coming as a holiday event two thumbs up as far as i'm concerned so rolling crisis event optimizations we've added taunt skill that governors will uh, can use to force a chieftain to attack them okay Governors can now exchange for special concussion items in the event store to buff their troops for Soroli Assault, Soroli Crisis, and Ian's Ballads. Cool. So if you're having a little bit of trouble getting through hard, hell, nightmare, whatever you're playing in, you might be able to spend a little bit of your coins to ensure that for the next time you'll get that item to help you spruce up your attacks and manage to successfully finish the toughest of levels so you get the best rewards available. New Chieftain, Ak and Hawk. Born in light, in light and shadow, these twins brothers fight as one. You'll need to per perfect your strategies if you want to defeat the fearsome opponent. So if you go take a quick peek at Soroli Crisis, which we, are, we have going on right now, you'll see that there are two spots still available for, for two new bosses. I believe these are the guys we're seeing. And by the way, in case you don't know how they look like, well, here's one of them. I like it. It means that there are six more opportunities to gain coins. If you're doing the highest of levels of them, that would be uh, 750 coins times six. You give or take, that's what, 4,500 more coins, which means you can get more of your Kiera right here, as well as any other rewards on this account. We haven't picked up any of this stuff yet, but once you do, all of these go away as well as uh, these guys right here. I like it. Increasing, improving, working on that Soroli Crisis. The only thing that I'm missing for Soroli Crisis is a, folk, a set of people to do this with consistently. Uh, when the event pops up during the uh, server resets, I'm asleep. And by the time I wake up, a lot of folks already finished the event. So I need to come up with like a team of four that I know that they know what they're doing. We have our set times that we can play all together and get it done. What we will be doing though, is I am going to work on a group, hopefully for the next run, for a group of the members in this channel in game so we can all help each other out as members to continue and get through this event as well. So stay tuned for that, that is coming too. What else we got going on here? Lost Kingdom event optimizations. Okay, based on your feedback about Lost Kingdom event, we've made the following optimizations. Replaced bloodthirst mechanic with hot blooded, preventing governors from abusing mechanics to prevent pass from being captured. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank the Lord. This is the exploit where folks have been sending tier ones all day, all night to these damn passes. And every time that tier one dies on the pass, it triggered bloodthirst, which would heal 35,000 troops on the pass, which means it was impossible to take them over. When you need to take over a pass for the first time, there are barbarians in there you gotta defeat. And this exploit essentially ensured that nobody could kill those barbarians because three rallies were hitting it. And then five, one tier one marches would hit that thing die and all those troops healed up in the past and it was impossible finally they fixed that thank the lord that's all thanks to you and your feedback by the way maybe ours too added a new event rewarding honor points to replace almighty overlord event in lost kingdom season one and two this change will not apply to lost kingdom events which are already begun Hallelujah. second craziest thing in KVK, I mean, 
mighty almighty overlord would essentially do you have a lot of money are you going to spend boatloads of speed ups cool let's give you more honor essentially if you were someone who spends a lot of money in this game you could have very easily closed up about 70 80 even a hundred thousand more than that honor just by blasting speed ups and so if you wanted to grind and get those tw top 20 positions, it would have been that much easier. Nowadays in light and darkness, they have the light and darkness event, which replaced it. We're going to make videos about that in this channel as well. I love it. Excellent change. Adjusted Lost Kingdom Light in Darkness immigration so that they prevents immigration for, for kingdoms in the matchmaking phase. This is an interesting one. I was really worried about how this worked out because the way it worked is that immigration locked only at the beginning of Eve of the Crusade. But matchmaking phase was enough time for anyone who got screwed or didn't like their team or didn't thought that there was a better team that they can get to to guarantee themselves a win to dip out on their alliance and pretty much screw them over. Now, mm -mm, not anymore. And honestly, I think this is too little. If you ask me, way before that, when the A's and B's and C's and D teams are declared, Migration should be locked. That's my personal opinion. I don't know. That's my personal opinion on the thing. But this is a good step towards getting there. Other changes. Added a city theme manager. Huh. Okay. Here is a speculation. So one of the things that have been announced, not announced, but like one of the um, suggestions left for the devs and they give us as dev feedback in, in the rise of kingdoms discord channel is that they will potentially maybe consider the option of having the city themes come as fragments and then if you miss the city theme in the past you'll be able to get fragments of it and slowly and steadily get a, a theme a skin whatever you want to call it that you don't have so for example if you are someone who hasn't had the opportunity to win kvk1 then you will be able to potentially get twilight falls if you are someone who hasn't been able to spend a crazy amount in order to get there maybe the uh, uh the events that are such as i believe this is one first anniversary event or the saints halo event during the christmas 2019 event these kinds of skins might become available very soon i believe that that's what they mean by city theme and so a city theme manager might be hinting towards possibilities of getting city themes that have already gone by. Interesting. Improved commander skill sound effects. Okay. Lucerne Scroll Volume 4 is about to unfold. We got a couple days, I believe like two weeks, a week and a half until Lucerne Scroll Season 3 ends. They're letting us know there's going to be one coming up right after. Updated Ceroli Assault Reward System. Chieftains will now drop items that governors can exchange for a variety of prizes. Okay. Awesome. Increased drop in barbarian camps and barbarian keeps. And the refreshing period of chieftain barbarians have become more irregular. Okay. So time out. First... You guys said you increased it in the past like two updates ago and turns out that increasing the drop rate, what you meant, meant is you're going to put a bunch of stuff that wasn't there before that is fairly useless, like one arrow or two minute, five minute speed ups instead of the blueprints that used to drop, which is what everybody hunted for. Now you're going to increase it even further, but also make it so that it's not as easy to get these because it's an irregular time. Does increase the drop rate mean so I'm going to get more arrowheads now? Or am I finally going to get blueprints, which is why people do these? I'm skeptical about this one. I'm skeptical about this one. I really hope by drop rate, they mean the blueprints drop rate and not the other stuff drop rate. Don't get me wrong. It's not useless to pick up 150 food, wood, 112,000 stone, or an hour or even three hours worth of speed ups. But if you ever tried to do the chieftains, if you ever tried to do the, the towers, those things, unless you get a blueprint, are completely not worth your time. And quite frankly, we've seen this before. Fool me once, shame on you, and you did. Fool me twice, not gonna happen. One-click talent upgrade feature. Governors can now 
choose any talent and tap upgrade to immediately activate the chosen talent and all prerequisite talents. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I've been saying this for so long. Like, why do I need to click, 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 all the way through? Let me click on the damn tree, click go, and it goes all the way up. Why not? Thank you. But I do need to add one more thing. I would very much appreciate Love of Gaming if as long as a talent tree preset isn't active, you should be able to reset it without needing a reset talent reset uh, item. If it's not active, let me play around with the talents. I'm all for having to pay a talent reset to change the, the presets between the active one and the inactive one. But if I want to test to see what kind of combinations I can do, I shouldn't have to go out to an external app that will allow me to do it. You should allow me to play with it. And so long as I don't activate it, when I click reset for it to reset rather than it taking talent items. Now for the record, I haven't tried it in a long time. They might have actually already fixed that little thing. But last time I tried to build a, like a nice little preset just to try it. And then I clicked on reset to, you know, reset it and try something else. It asked me a talent reset item and I didn't like that at all. Updated the chat system to fix the problem where players are losing messages or unable to send messages. What problem? There are billions of them. It's not one, but anyway. However, following this update, chat records older than seven days will be deleted. Chat records from public channels as such as Alliance and Kingdom channels may be also lost. So please make backup before update. One, make backup means what? Take screenshots or are you gonna give us any way to backup messages? Can we somehow save them into our inbox or something? What do you mean by make backups? Number two, quite frankly, you've said four updates ago, even five updates ago, that chats would be the same across devices. I keep messing, me missing messages because I get messages here while recording, I don't notice, and then I never see them until a week after when someone goes, why didn't you reply to me? How about instead of only this, fix that damn chat so it works across all devices and works. No more code six, no more database errors, no more messages not popping up, no more having to figure out if everybody's quiet or my chat is broken. Even worse, as of late, I open the chat, it opens the thing on the side, doesn't load the messages, doesn't let me close it, and I can click like it's not open and so when I click on it, I actually click on the city behind it. Oh, if, come on, man. Fix the damn chat. Fooled me once already. You're not fooling me twice. I want to see it fixed, please. What do you guys think about this update? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. I'm Gecko. I'm out of here. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. Uh, yeah, I think this is overall pretty good. I'm not complaining about anything in here. I think it's okay. New bosses is good. New holiday event, always nice. Although I prefer the individual ones over the Alliance based ones, but that's okay. Osiris Invitational, very exciting. We'll cover that in depth on this channel as we participate in it. Uh, what else, what else? Thoroly Crisis optimizations, not bad at all. Lost Kingdom optimizations, two thumbs up, not bad at all. Let's see what else the future brings. They're setting up the stage for a few interesting things to come in the future. I'm very excited for that. I appreciate all your support and all your feedback. We'll be back with Rams' test videos very soon. I'll see you guys sooner rather than later. Enjoy the rest of your week and take care. Peace.